As I record this video, we're currently in deepest, darkest winter. We are talking J.R.R. Tolkien levels of winter. It's the middle of Jan, and I think it's a good time for me to make my New Year's resolution video. I am now a fan of New Year's resolutions video, but I never used to be. I've made New Year's resolutions videos every year for the past three or four years. <laughs> So I thought I'd go for a run today. We've got two weeks until Jamie, Paul and myself are doing the Yorkshire Three Peaks Challenge in two weeks. Beautiful Sunday morning, sun shining. We've got two weeks until Three Peaky Blinders are out in Yorkshire. It's a bit cliche as I say it out loud. Service I've run in January. Now, I'm past the point of the furthest I've stopped and head back. That's 2K down. I can't breathe. I am now a fan of New Year's resolutions, but I never used to be. I used to think New Year's resolutions were for other people. They're to be broken. A form of virtue signaling that when put on social media were rubbish and if kept quiet was also nonsense. A lose-lose pointless exercise. That's what I used to think, but then again, I used to weigh 30 stone or 190 kg. So it makes sense that I used to justify how unfit and unhealthy I was with irrational thought processes like this. So my views on many things, many, many things have changed, including setting New Year's resolutions. I just want to caveat that you don't need to wait for the 1st of Jan to make change. For example, I gave up alcohol completely on the 12th of April 2019. Nothing special about that date, except that it was when I decided to go completely to teetotal. Change only happens when the risk of staying the same is greater than the risk of change. But considering we're in January, I thought I'd share my new plans now, hopes and ambitions for the year ahead. Before we start and get into it, I just want to context this video because I'm going to get a lot of comments from people saying that running an ultra or running a marathon or running a 10K is too much for someone starting out in fitness. I just want to point out where I am right now. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. I just want to start with a quote that resonated with me years ago one that was said by Steve Jobs, and I quote, For the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Now, my answer to this question was no for a lot longer than a few days. So I decided to make serious change. I broke down my priorities into several parts. I didn't sit and make Excel spreadsheets or PowerPoint presentations to do this. I simply worked out the things that were important to me in my head and I took time to write them on a notepad. I wrote down the things that were important to me and I scored them out of 10. It wasn't based on anything scientific, it was just how I felt about each category based on my focus, so focus being the time I put into it per week, and the output, the physical results, if any, of how well I thought I was doing with each category. These categories are not in any particular order. Now I sat down and did this just after I decided to make change, so kind of about 2019. And those headers were family, body, mind, well-being, business, money, and fitness. So seven categories or seven things that I decided I wanted to focus on. They're all pretty self-explanatory and don't need much explaining. Family being family, which is pretty obvious. Body was about making healthy choices. Mind was education and self-development. Well-being was mindfulness and having fun. Interestingly, on this point, one of the first questions asked by a GP on a depression questionnaire is about finding joy in things. Finding joy in anything is very, very important. Business is having a means of creating an income. Money was obvious and fitness, separate to body, is again obvious. Uh, it's separate to body because you can eat healthy, but having the stamina and endurance to run a 5K, for example, is separate to just choosing to have a healthy salad for dinner. 
So all of these seven points I decided were areas that I wanted to improve. There are other things that are important, but all in all, these headers covered almost everything that's important to me and every personal ambition I will have in the past and have in the future have gone under one of these headers. So in a nutshell, the reason why I'm sharing this is to context why I've chosen to do what I've done in the past and also why I'm choosing to do what I'm about to do this year. If you're unsure of kind of the journey I've been on, I've got a video that I made which was called the value of overcoming a really hard challenge video. I'll link it in the description. It kind of gives an indication of where I've been and where I'm going. So I scored each one of these categories out of 10 based on how well I believed I was doing with each one. And I came out with the following scores. Family, I scored scored myself a four, body was zero, mind was eight, well-being was a two, business was nine, money was 10, and fitness, again, was a big fat zero. This was back in 2019, and it was an eye-opener. How I felt about each category, and subsequently how I scored them, was not a surprise, but going through this process made me face into how many poor choices I'd made for such a long period of my life. To be fair, weighing in 190 kg, I didn't need a diagram to know that I wasn't doing things right, but I did this exercise a year or so after I decided to lose weight. I did it as a way of focusing on what was important and as an exercise to hopefully remove the white noise and distractions that can easily derail anyone's ambitions. So I did it to focus myself. Okay, I think I should, I think I should probably give you a bit of a pre-warning about this video. So the title might have been a bit clickbaity. Um, this is my first attempt at 30 miles. It certainly starts out that way. I start, I, however, it doesn't end uh, at 30 miles. So please keep watching and enjoy the video. Thank you. So here we are back on the Thames. Um, I think you can see it. That point here, just on the edge here. There, that's the point there where I started and we've just walked all the way up here. Now, for me, there were many reasons for these scores, far too many reasons to put into one video. I will try and convey some of the issues that led me to scoring myself like this within future videos. But for this video, I will say that my unbalanced focus on my then corporate career outweighed my other priorities and had a negative impact on my own personal overall well-being, as well as eating really badly and over-drinking, all contributing to years of abuse on my body. I'm sharing this really personal info to add context as to why I want to do what I want to do, and also to why I've done what I've done. So that was the Woolwich Ferry. Um, the Woolwich Ferry goes from Woolwich, obviously, um, over to Beckton on the other side of the river. I'm not crossing here. I'm gonna cross on the Tilbury Graves End to Tilbury Foot. So I'm gonna cross on the Graves End to Tilbury. So, so I'm gonna cross on the Graves End to Tilbury Foot Ferry. Now I scored myself really well on business and money because I may have been providing a good income financially for my family, as well as being the archetypal breadwinner, but I wasn't present in the moment for when it mattered, mainly because of my distracted, career-minded mindset and very, very unhealthy lifestyle. It was a vicious circle. These very negative aspects of my life, stressful job and unhealthy lifestyle, had a very negative effect on the other more important aspects of my life, such as my mental health and my family, who at the time, I believed, I firmly believed, I was doing all the right things for. I was just doing my best. My only regret is that I didn't make this change any sooner. So I looked in the mirror and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? And the answer every day was always no. And I knew it would always be no until I changed what I was doing every single day. So my camera went in my bag probably a couple of miles before the end. Um, and my, my day ended with me uh, in pretty bad shape. So it was one of the biggest challenges I've, I've done in my life, if I'm frank. And I'd walked 21 miles through the streets of London uh, along the Thames path. Thank you for watching. 
and uh, I'm going to keep doing this until Race to the Stones, which is in uh, which is in about 40 days from now. Thank you. So the fact that I've done this, I don't see it as a failure. I was incredibly frustrated that night um, when I went home. The fact that I hadn't actually achieved 30 miles, 30, 30 miles, miles, 30 miles. So my miles. first priority was to change the main negative influence on me and my ability to effectively make the change. I had to leave the very stressful corporate industry that I had worked in since the age of 18 and not return to it. I also had to quit alcohol as I knew this was not not part of the solution and I had to make change as well as focusing on everyone else. It's the same mentality as the safety briefing on commercial airlines. They always say that if the oxygen masks drop in the event of an emergency then you should always put yours on first before helping your loved ones. If you pass out through lack of oxygen, then you won't be able to help anyone else around you. That same rule applied to changing and fixing my very, very unhealthy lifestyle. So to be a better dad and a better partner, I first had to be better at being healthier, both physically and probably at the time, more importantly, mentally. I've simplified a lot of what I did for the benefit of this video and not everything that happened to me did so in the order I've described or as easily as I've made it sound but this relatively simple explanation I hope adds some context to this video. Both Tracy and I decided to start our own family business and in the early days several years ago now we made a fraction of what I earned in the corporate world but it was enough to tick us over subsidizing our outgoings without savings as the business grew and we managed to make it work. This gave me the freedom and something that was a very rare commodity, time to focus on the family. I also had time to build my new YouTube channel and last year I took the decision to up my game and create and upload one video every week. I hope you've noticed an improvement in the frequency of my videos. And it's at this point in the video where I stop and ask you to consider subscribing. If you see the value in the content that I make, then I ask that you possibly take the time to subscribe. It really helps me out. It helps me out with the algorithm on YouTube and it helps me grow as a content creator. That's what they're called on YouTube, I believe, content creators. I suppose that's what I am. I did that section quite professionally as it was an advert for my channel. I've committed to wanting to document my fitness journey. I'm far from the finished article. Uh, and I have big aspirations as I get faster, stronger, and lighter. I'm a lot lighter than where I used to be. I have now organized and set myself new challenges to achieve this year. I've treated my fitness and my aspirations to overcome hard challenges as a task. I've actually diarized it, organized it, constructed it, sat down and planned it, which is very unlike me. I've almost treated it like a job. 2024 is gonna be the biggest year of my life and I've broken my 2024 targets down into the previously mentioned headers, family, body, mind, well-being, business, money, and fitness. Family is very personal and probably not something for a YouTube video, uh, mind, business and money, I scored myself as doing all right in these, even though I want to continue to develop my mind. So I'm going to focus on the areas that need the most attention at this point. My body, my well-being and my fitness. And everything that I've signed on to falls into one of these three categories. I currently weigh 100 kg or about 15 and a half stone. I'm pretty much half of what I used to weigh only five years ago. I can't keep having weight loss as my number one target, which is where it's been for the last three years. It's still there and I'd like to be slightly lighter to help with my Zwifting and running ambitions, but I now intend to focus on my strength training more than weight loss. I am going to continue with my weekly training routine that I outlined in a previous video called Run, Zwift and Lift. One of the biggest problems I have with setting gym related targets is that it's really hard to set specific numbers on things I want to achieve. I can say that I want to lose another 10 kg, but it's hard to say that I want to grow X amount of muscle. Plus gym related targets are really boring. So I'm going to skirt over this aspect of my plan for this year, but there is one. If you want to know what my gym routine looks like, then I'll add that video into the description below. It'll give you an indication of what I'm going to focus on. So getting straight into it, I'm kicking 2024 off this weekend with my first marathon of the year. I'm 
intentionally signed up to it in January and it's a tough trail marathon running 26.2 miles across the South Downs along winter covered muddy footpaths and trails. It's called the South Downs and Arundel Marathon and it's going to be a good kickstarter to get my long distance run training back up and going after Christmas. I spent most of December on Zwift races and at park runs park running. And as much as I have enjoyed my indoor cycle racing and smashing my parkrun PBs, uh, I've put my parkrun PB video in the description below, that got me through Christmas. I need to kickstart my long distance run training ahead of some huge events later on this year where I've set myself some real tough targets to achieve. And to achieve them, I need to get out there and train it. So this weekend's cold and muddy trail marathon is not only going to be a lot of fun, but also a great way to progress back into my run training. Just please have me in your prayers if it starts snowing this week, which is what it's forecast to do. I've also signed up to the Tour de Zwift on Zwift this month. As I make this video, I'm now two races down with the six remaining races set up in the diary for February. I tried to stand for the hill. I, ah. Uh... I've become completely addicted to Zwift. Since I purchased my smart bike back in May last year, it's completely revolutionized my training and my fitness. I'm done. My weight loss plateaued and Zwift got me over that hurdle. And now I weigh almost exactly 100 kg. A lot has to be said to be able to jump on a bike no matter the weather and train for as long as I want to. My Zwift ambitions for 2024 are simple, to continue to enjoy racing for training purposes. When I first bought the smart bike, I had no intentions of becoming a cyclist. It was solely as a once a week training aid to bolster my ultra marathon training. That intention has not changed, but I do want to become a better Zwifter. I've been addicted to Zwift now, so you know I want to I want to get better at it. And for this reason, I have two simple Zwift ambitions for 2024. I want to outright win a Cat D race. I smashed that course and race. That's by far my best race and my best sprint so far. I achieved second place on Zwift Power. Another podium place and one more step closer to that mystical first place win. And I want to get promoted to Cat C. I've been making videos about winning races in Cat D for a while now. So again, you can go and watch them on my channel. And these are two simple ambitions for Zwift that I feel are currently achievable, but yet challenging enough that allow me to continue to make entertaining videos about my progress on Zwift. My focus for YouTube is to make my channel much more well-rounded, focused on my fitness progress, as well as journaling with entertaining videos about me overcoming really, really hard challenges. I think that winning my first Cat D race and then getting promoted to Cat C will make for entertaining videos along with the other challenges I have planned for this year. To add to my Zwift and cycling ambitions, I have done something else. I have done a thing that I said I would never do. I said to Tracy when I first bought the smart bike and signed up to Zwift to not allow me to buy a real road bike. I haven't yet bought a road bike, but I do need to as I have signed up to the London to Brighton bike ride. I haven't ridden a bike since 1998 when I was 18, except for an attempt to ride several years back now when I first tried to lose weight. I very quickly realized I was too heavy to ride a bike and sold it before it split me in half like a cheese grater. London to Brighton is 54 miles long. It's not a race and finishing will be challenge enough for me. There is a 143 meter climb up Ditchling Beacon close to Brighton with an average incline of 9% and a maximum gradient of 16% mental. And I can't believe I have actually signed up to a IRL bike ride. I'm genuinely looking forward to it. In the meantime, I need to start to think about buying a basic bike for the event. I'm treating it as a fun ride, which is what it is, and as a gentle entry into the world of IRL cycling. I am up for reading and replying to comments about what bike to buy, but please be aware I'm not going to invest in a bike that costs me more than my car does, regardless of how good it is downhill or how great it is in the draft. The London to Brighton bike ride is in June, only a week before I take on the London 55k ultra marathon through London from Woolwich to Richmond Park. So this is my ultra London 55k video. Oh. 
I then also raced another runner to the finish line and sprinted the last 50 metres. No matter how tired you are, you should always sprint to a finish line if you can. For the London 55k, I haven't set myself a time for it. I'm doing it a week after I ride the London to Brighton bike ride. It's very hilly through and around Crystal Palace and the hill zapped my strength for my legs. It also was the hottest day of the year, so it's not going to be cold. I just hope it's not going to be a heat wave. So for these reasons, I'm not going to set myself a time. I'm just going to use it as a uh, entry into ultra marathon running this year. If I plan and pace myself well, I'm sure I can save time on my last attempt. That's it. That will be my aim. To beat my previous time. Done. Simple. I'm just going to set that as my target for the fit London. I've just thought of it now. I'm just going to set that as the time for my London 55k ultra to run it faster than I did last year. And then in April, I have our annual 10k race that Tracy and I do together. We do it every year. Well, I did it last year with her. Where are we, Tracy? Uh, Colchester Zoo. Almost to that name of the race. Uh... Stampede, 10K. And it's taken us 45 minutes to get in here because of the traffic. And it's on open roads in and around Essex, 10K. And it's where I set my PB last year. So hopefully on these really flat roads, I can set another PB. Oh, can I have this one? Thank you. And then in May, Tracy and I are getting married and I'm under strict instructions not to book any major events for May. Apparently, getting married should be enough to focus on. And I wholeheartedly agree with Tracy on this point, just in case she watches this video. Apparently, this is the biggest event of the year. It is the biggest event of the year. I've recorded that twice now in the hope that one of those come out well, just in case she's watching. I've already covered June with the London to Brighton and the 55k Ultra. Then in July, I have, this is a big one, the Fan Dance event. This is really, really going to be interesting for me. A completely new take on trail running and an endurance event rolled into one. I made a separate video about the Fan Dance, which I've linked in the description below. It's a 24 kilometer race over Penny Fan in the Brecon Beacons. Penny Fan is 886 meters high and I'll have to climb it twice on a loop and I'll have to do this carrying about 45 pounds of weight on my back in an army bergen. Then only seven days after the fan dance or a week later I have signed up for something very very special. For anyone that knows me or knows my backstory or has followed me for a while will know just how special this event is going to be for me. I don't cry emotionally stunted my family call me but i may shed a tear when i cross the finish line of this event so here it is in july this year i will be returning to the race to the stones 100k ultra marathon i've got shivers just saying it i've been on a journey for the last four months I've been on a personal uh crusade really around wanting to make some changes from a health perspective i've lost four stone in four months and uh, I needed a target, I needed something to achieve. Race to the Stones gave me that. For the last four months, Race to the Stones has consumed my spare time uh, and every moment I've had that's not been working or spending with uh, the family, I've been out training, walking, practicing, running and trying to get as fit as I physically can. The Race to the Stone event is the event that kickstarted my fat to fit journey back in July 2019 when I trained for and walked 100k or 62 miles along the Ridgeway. Originally when I signed up to the Race of the Stones it looked to be more like a walking event than a running one. A walker's version of Glastonbury or a walking festival and it did very much feel that way. You see this challenge nearly killed me. As at the time, I weighed just over 24 stone. I had already lost five stone in prep for this event. This event is what scared me literally into losing weight and walking to get fit or fitter for the first time in my life at the age of 39. I don't remember crossing the finish line. I was in such a bad way. And the days that followed, I can only describe as horrific. There is one word to describe those days and that word has to be horrific. Now, I don't show this in the original video as I was scared to show any signs of weakness back then. Well done. Thank you. 
<laughs> Being tired to the point of mental and physical exhaustion apparently was a sign of weakness to the 2019 version of me. I can't complain too much about my mentality at the time as that same mentality that didn't want me showing negativity on video uh, also got me across the Ridgeway and to the finish line of this really tough route against all the odds. With the exception of my partner and children, not a single other person in my life thought I'd finish this event. That's how unfit I really was. So I did it. I completed it, it took me 26 or so hours, 26 or so hours of non-stop walking, but I did it in the end. Hardest thing I've ever done. However, one of the best experiences I've ever had. These, uh, these two days meant a lot to me and uh, it's great to be able to kick it off as completed. However, I keep saying never again. I obviously proved them all wrong, but nearly killed myself in the process. Race of the Stones will always hold a very, very special place in my heart. I know returning to this event fitter, stronger and lighter will be exciting and far more enjoyable. This time I'll be running this event, Race of the Stones, straight through. The last time I did it in 2019, I completed it across two days with an overnight camp in between in about 27 hours of walking. I'm not sure what was harder, the 100k of walking or the five hours of very, very broken sleep in a tent. Morning, day two. Race to the Stones is the event of 2024 that I am most looking forward to. And the wedding. I'm also looking forward to my wedding. Tracy, if you're watching. August is a quiet month from an event perspective. I'm going to use the month to reset my training routine, refocus back onto my strength training, and maybe complete a few cheeky park runs with a few Zwift races and hopefully wins in between. Ready to go again in September when I have, are you ready for this? The Thames Path 100K Challenge. Uh, so I really, really enjoyed the Thames Path Challenge last year and I was on for a fantastic time until the wheels completely fell off at about 80k-ish. Oh my god. This is bullshit. This year, my intention is to return and go for a sub 17 hour time. Last time I did it in about 20, 21 hours. That's it, come on! We've done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well done, well well Thank done. you. Give you a medal. Thank you. Well done. Oh, you have no idea. I'm pleased I have to be here. <laughs> Cute. 17 hours is just over a 10 minute kilometer pace. Sounds easy, but if you extend that pace over 100K, it's very soon becomes unbearably fast. That pace also includes stopping to take on food and water, especially water, as last year, the Thames Path Challenge happened on the single hottest day of 2023. It was a sculpture. So, tactic here, I'm not gonna spend any time. Right. Just right. refill water, yeah. get going. Uh, just about to leave pit stop, got some electrolytes in this one, plain water, and then plain water in the bladder. Nearly two liters of plain water, 500 milliliters of electrolytes. That will see me to the next pit stop. Next pit stop is in 13K. Let's do this. So that 17 hour or 10 minute pace target is a very, very challenging target. But considering the route is pancake flat, unlike Race of the Stones, I know it's gonna be a target worth attempting. That's why I haven't put a time on Race of the Stones. Race of the Stones is a return. Um, whereas the Thames Path Challenge is uh, exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to be a big challenge for me to push my pace. I'll only succeed if I train like a monster for the whole of this year in build up to it. And I promise to make entertaining videos about my training along the way. Then in October, I have the Battersea Park Marathon in Battersea Park. <laughs> Yay! 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 
I ran this marathon last year. I loved every second of it, and I'm going to use it to set my new marathon PB. Hopefully, by this point, I'll be at my fittest and strongest after a year of ultra training, strong enough to go out and run a sub five hour marathon, maybe. Sub five hours at the moment feels really challenging and very, very optimistic. But in the context of the training I've planned for this year, it's possibly, quite possibly, achievable. <laughs> Absolutely smashing it today. Yes, child! Oh, I've never seen him run so fast. Let's go! You are so close now! Woo! Woo! <laughs> what a run! And then in November and December, I currently have these months clear to focus on park runs, Zwift, gym, and Christmas. And then in brackets, family. I've actually written in brackets, family. In real New Year's res video tradition, my final target for 2024 is my favorite one. This is a real fun one. My park run target. Last year, I set myself a really challenging and hugely optimistic park run target of running one in under 30 minutes. At the time, my park run PB was 33 minutes. So when I set that target, I had to find a way of shaving at least three minutes off my time. And I achieved that in December, right at the end of last year, and then I did it again last week where I set myself an even better sub 30 minute park run target. The video for this is in the description. This year, my new park run target is going to be, are you ready for this? A sub 25 minute park run. That's ridiculous, I know. To shave five minutes off my 5k time by the end of this year is a huge and massive undertaking. It's going to be hugely optimistic. So having now said all that, this year is my biggest year ever. I've never signed up to so much in advance like this. I'm sure I'm going to sign up to things as and when they come up throughout the year, but these are some of the most stretching targets I've ever set myself. I also have the ambition to continue to upload videos on a weekly basis that continue to entertain you. Currently, I'm sitting at just under 3,000 subscribers, and I'd love to reach my next big benchmark of 10,000 subscribers subscribers by the end of this year. But the only way I'm going to do this is by continuing to add entertaining videos that add value. I just want to say thank you for watching this one. If you really want to help me achieve one of my new 2024 targets, and I really need a lot of help, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. It helps motivate me and it keeps me wanting to make more videos. If you have any New Year's resolutions that you'd like to share, then please feel free to share them in the comments below. I always like to see people share what they're up to, and I'm always willing to reply to any comments about New Year's resolutions. Please follow me on Instagram where I share regular updates and musings about how I'm getting on. And uh, yeah, all that's left to say is thank you for watching. Keep looking in that mirror. Keep pushing forward. And I'll see you in next week's video. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. The wedding is the most important event of 2024 and one I am most looking forward to. <laughs> I'm very lucky Tracy doesn't watch my videos. <laughs>